So VOLPAT stands for Volatility and Pattern Recognition. Is anybody here familiar with volatility breakout systems? Anybody ever traded a volatility breakout system? You have? What, what system? What? What system? Uh, any system. You've traded several of them? Yeah. Okay. Well, what I did with Volpat is to uh, come up with what I thought was a very clever way of determining volatility. I have to say, nowadays, I don't think it makes any difference how you... Volatility is, is merely... It's, it's a measurement of recent price activity. And we're looking for some change in that, some, some piece of it to explode to indicate that the market wants to move. Um, in fact, if you just look at this chart, the, the, the markets tend, volatility, I always think of volatility as being like a spring. It, it, it kind of compresses down, and you have some rather small days, like you'll see right in here or, or, or right in there where the days get kind of small. And, and they never stay small for very long. They have to kind of spring out of there at some point. So I, you, if you measure recent price activity and look for some indication that it has changed or increased, going with whatever direction it increases, again, starts putting the probabilities in your favor. So the way I, I did the, the volatility in Volpat, as I said at the time, I thought it was really clever. I looked at the last three days price bars. You forgive me, that's not the best artwork you've ever seen. I know, I wasn't an art major. But what I did was I calculated from the highest high to the lowest close of the last three days. And let's, let's do it this way. The highest high to the lowest close for the last three completed bars. And I also went from the highest close to the lowest low of the last three bars. And I took whichever of these figures is the largest. So like in this example, we would be measuring this would be the highest high. And this looks like the lowest close to me. This is the highest close, and this is the lowest low. Everybody follow me? Everybody know what I'm looking at here? OK. Somebody say no? OK. <laughs> so what, what I'm doing is I'm taking a measurement. This measurement here, let's label that one. That's, that's this guy here, the highest high to the lowest close. And the highest high to the lowest close here would be 2. And I've done it just backwards because I'm married. I'm used to doing things backwards. Whichever one of these is the larger figure is the one I'm interested in. I want to take a, a, big, a big piece of this volatility, if you will. And then I did two things with it. In fact, maybe I better stay here. I did two things with it. I, I calculated both 70 and 75 percent of that figure and then added, added and subtracted it from the close and the open. Now, that was very quick. Let me do that again. First of all, I'll take whatever this figure is, and I'll take 70% of it. And from this close here, I'll displace it 70% up to here to give me one potential buy. And 70% to there to give me a potential sell. Now, these would be entered on stops. If the market moved that far, I'm in at that point. Anybody ever, uh, anybody ever read the, the book called The Atom Theory by Wells Wilder? No one's read that? Um, Have you? I, it's, been around a while. it's been around a long time. And, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that the, that the methodology in the book means much. It's, uh, well. It's not, well, why don't you tell us what you really think? I, uh, it, it, what it says is the longer a market goes in one direction, the longer it'll keep going in that direction. And obviously, if you've had this huge nine-month trend, to assume it'll continue nine months is probably not correct. But there was an aspect of the book that I really liked. And I hope you guys don't mind if, I, if I'll tell you this story. The guy who wrote the book, uh, Jim Sloman, helped Wiles Wilder wrote, write it. And he wrote this fable. You guys remember fables from when you were a kid? Aesop's fables? Well, he wrote this fable, and it's about, I, I'm paraphrasing this, I hope I don't screw it up for you. 
he, he wrote this fable about a place called Marketland. And there was a gentleman named Mr. B. Wright, who was a world-renowned expert at the market, which is what Marketland was all about, predicting the market. And he was a, an expert in Melanixnar frequencies and Azerhoff numbers. You guys know what those are? <laughs> Me neither. But he was an expert. And, and he, was, he was in demand at cocktail parties and speaking engagements, and everybody wanted to know what Mr. B. Wright thought about the market because he was an expert in these melanix star frequencies and Azerhoff numbers, and he could predict almost anything. Well, he's in his office one day, and he's sort of fussing and fuming about the way all of us are now while we're trying to do our taxes, right? And his little daughter, who was, I don't know, three or five at the time, who incidentally, her name is here now, she walks in and she says, Daddy, what's wrong? He says, oh, honey, I, he says, you, I don't think you'd understand. It's the market, and you, and you don't understand the market. She says, well, you're, you're right, Daddy, but I'll listen. What, what's wrong? He says, well, he says, I, I've, I've bought the market, okay? I, I've, I've bought a lot of stuff, and, you know, it isn't working out very well. So she walks over to his computer screen, and it looks about the opposite of this one here. It's got a big downtrend line. And she says, Daddy, this little line right here, is that the market? He said, yeah, honey, that's, that's, that's the market. She says, well, Daddy, isn't it going down right now? He says, well, yeah, honey, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I see. There's no way I can explain this to you, honey. You're too young to understand. You see, we have these melanix in our frequencies and Azerhoff numbers coming in right in this period here. And whenever that happens, the market always goes up. You know, everybody comes to me for my advice because I know these things. And the market will go up from here. She looks at the screen again. She says, well, she says, okay, Daddy, I, I believe you. I mean, I know you're a smart man and all. But she says, isn't it going down right now? He says, honey, look, I don't have time to explain this to you. There's, just, there, there's no way you're going to understand this until you're much, much older. When the Azerhoff numbers and melanix star frequencies come in together, the market absolutely, positively has to turn. That's all there is to it. She, she starts crying a little bit. She says, Daddy, I'm sorry you're upset with me, but I'm not wrong, am I? Isn't the market going down right now? I don't understand any of those things you're saying, but it looks to me like it's going down. He thinks for a minute, and he said, would you say that again, please, honey? She says, well, Daddy, all I'm saying is I don't understand all those fancy things you do, but I think I, I've learned direction, and it looks to me like the market's going down right now. He said, yes, honey, it is. And he picked up his phone, and he closed out his long position, and he went short. And he now makes more money than ever, but he's no fun at all at cocktail parties. And the moral of that story is basically in her name, here now. We can come up with all kinds of fancy things, technical indicators, cycles, all kinds of stuff that'll tell us what the market should do. The market's going to do whatever it's going to do. And something like this, the volatility breakout, forces you to go with the market when it's doing it. Now, the whole question, you know, how do you know a market's going up? Well, it's because it's going up. You know, I mean, it, it's as simple as it gets. I don't know how, I, I, it's hard to explain it in a technical sense, but a market's going up because it's going up. And volatility breakout gives us a way to measure and say, well, how high is high? How, how far does it have to go before we agree? Yeah, that's probably going up, okay? And there isn't a magic figure. I used to think there was. There really isn't. Uh, you, you, you're, you're choosing of how much volatility you use to create these things, essentially, allows you to control your trade frequency. You know, the, the, the short, smaller your figures are, the more frequently you're going to get in, the more frequently you're going to be wrong, of course, but you'll have better entries into when you do get in. And the longer you wait, the, the bigger the move has to be before you get in, but hopefully the higher quality it is. I mean, it really has to be moving. So I, I, I backed off and told you all that just so you understand what the concept is all about. We just, we want to go with the market, that's going up, and how do we know it's going up? Well, we have to come up with something that gives us a figure and says, this is up, okay? This is how we're going to define up. 
So in Volpat, that's one of the ways that I defined up. I also took 75% of the exact same figure and displaced it from the next day's open. Now let's say, let's say here's where we open the next day. We also have this same distance where we go 75% up or 75% down and have additional buy and sell points. And what I did was I took, the, I took the one that occurred the earliest, provided we didn't gap through it. Anybody ever been caught in an overnight gap? Yeah. Had a position, seen the market fly the other way? Okay. Once you're in the market, there's really nothing you can do about that. I, you know, they're, they're not, I don't know that they're predictable necessarily. Uh, but what I, what I did here to make sure that I didn't get caught buying as soon as it gapped was, was I, I insisted that if it gapped through the figure from the close, then you defaulted to the figure from the open. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Anybody understand how? Okay. Let's say I, I wrote here that the open was here, and then we took 75% of, of whichever of these was largest, and that's our buy and sell points. But if it hadn't opened there, what if it had opened here? Okay, that would be actually above the buy point from the close. Okay, now if we open here, I'm going to take that buy point from the close because it's closer than the one from the open. But if we gap above the one from the close, I don't want to buy that up there. If you, if you had a resting order in there, you would be filled immediately on the open. And, and I don't want that. I, I would rather, well, let me just say, most gaps come back. You know, when you see a market that gaps open in one direction, the tendency, again, probabilities, the tendency is for that thing to come back. So I don't want to buy as soon as I see a gap or sell as soon as I see a gap down. If it did this, I, I eliminated that buy. I just said, no, nah, I don't want to buy it on a gap. Now I have to go 75% above this before I have a buy spot. I wouldn't take that buy. Assuming there is no, no gap through the buyer sells, then I would take whichever one occurred first, the closest one, in other words. Okay? Now that actually, all by itself, makes for a pretty good system.